Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. This video is about adding a sense of damage, which just means reacting to damage taken. So we're going to start here by declaring a delegate. So this delegate has four parameters, hence the name. If you just go to one of these, hit F12, you can see there is a large list of various types, all with number of parameters, up to, I believe, nine, yeah. So we're using four. We're going to be uh, sending along the instigator, the causer, the uh, tag container, the source tag container, and the damage. And the name of it is FTDS on damage taken event. So to use that, we're going to declare a variable down here. We call this on damage taken. So we're declaring this uh, delegate so that we can send along uh, effectively this information right here, along with the damage. The other way that we have previously sent along similar information is with this. With the ability system component, we're calling get gameplay attribute value change delegate, which is a mouthful, uh, and we're doing it on an attribute. So anytime any of these attributes change, the function over here gets called. The problem is those functions are sending along some data, um, but not all the data that we want. So to use our on damage taken uh, delegate inside of our post gameplay effect execute when damage has been done, we're going to check to make sure that the delegate is bound. Uh, then we're going to get the effect context, use that to get the instigator and the effect causer. We're also going to use the data value that's sent, which has a ton of information to get the effect specs captured source tags, which uh, will not be used in this video, but could be in a future video. And also sending along the evaluated data magnitude. So this magnitude should match the get in damage up here. All right, with that set up, then we effectively need to subscribe to it, which we will do in the enemy character. So similarly to the other attribute changed events, I'm going to add and on damage taken changed, which basically just calls on damage taken uh, the blueprint function or the blueprint implementable event. So given that, we need to build this function, which is just calling this function. So you can just right click here, create definition, actually put it in the right place for me, which is nice. Uh, when, two reasons to do that is because when there's a function that's not created, it's a handy tool just to create it in the appropriate file, not necessarily appropriate location in the file. Um, but the other is uh, typing all this stuff out or copy pasting it manually is, you know, more prone to error. So here we're just calling on damage taken and sending along the instigator, causer, gameplay tag container, and damage. So I'll compile that. And lastly, because I totally didn't forget it, uh, up here we need to subscribe to the event. Alt set on damage taken. And we're going to add a U object. We're just calling our on damage taken changed. Recompile that. All right, so we can go into our enemy character of blueprint. Down here, we can add our on damage taken. Just going to print out the 
instigator, the causer, and the damage. Well, it's going to be, it's just chasing us. So there you can see when I hit it, it's saying the player state, the third person character, and then the damage. So that means that the instigator is actually the owner of the ability system component that applies the damage. The causer is the, uh, the character. Uh, and, well, damage is damage. So if this project was built with the ability system component being owned by the character instead of the player state, the both the instigator and the causer would just be the same value. So with that, I'm just going to remove this. Similar to the hearing sense, a damage sense requires a, a an event to be reported. So that's why we created this uh, on damage taken bit so that we can call report damage event. In this case, the damage actor is just going to be self. We'll use the instigator, uh, the damage amount, and most importantly, the damage causer location. So now that we have a reported damage event, we need to respond to that in our AI controller. So first thing we do in here is in the AI perception component, we're going to add another entry to the senses config. This one will be AI damage sense config. Let's expand that as you can see. Let's type uh, AI sense damage. It's got the color and the age and the, the usual stuff. So similarly, we'll duplicate this down here, change this to AI sense underscore damage. Throw another pin on our sequence. And that's just going to call handle damage. So handle damage, we're going to run the same as handle hearing, which is to say we're getting the stimulus location. We're adding a random damage or we're adding a random radius value to that location. And we're telling our AI that that's the target character location and it's just going to move towards it. Here we just need to add our handle damage call. And for those watching at home, I did the uh, the usual test where I purposefully left out this connection, so there was no way for this to get called actually testing the damage a little bit of a pain. I'm going to throw these way down to like 200 so that I can at least uh, keep the NPC on screen while I damage it. All right, grab the shotgun. Miss it a few times. Oh, that Once it gets hit, it's actually harder to test because I have the, uh, the radius on it. There we go. So it's moving to a random location near where I shot it from. And it pauses and, you know, r resumes its uh, random. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you'd like to support this channel or just want to download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.